Hi everyone, George Farmer here, and today we're going to talk about my brand new scape in an Aquascaper 1200 by Evolution Aqua. It's really simple, I've just used a couple of different types of rocks and some wood, and two or three species of plants. It's a classic island composition as you can see, so all of the, the planting, uh, the rocks and the wood are central, and then we have a perimeter of cosmetic sand with no planting in. Uh, livestock's really simple too, I've just got loads of cherry shrimp which are breathing like crazy and seven angel fish which are really quite special, I got them yesterday, they're settling in really well and we'll get some close ups with them for you later. So I'll just talk about the whole system um, in terms of the hardware and then we'll talk a little bit about the aquascape itself, we'll give you some nice close ups. So we've got Evolution Aqua lighting hanging kit here, it's a brush stainless steel uh, it's bolted onto the side of the cabinet, you do have to fit it yourself but it's a really easy job. Uh, beautiful bit of kit, really high quality, stainless steel so it won't corrode and it's adaptable. You can use these kits for pretty much any any size uh, or type of aquarium, even, even uh, corner tanks, triangular tanks. So moving on to the lighting itself, we've got uh, Kessel A360 WE Tuna Suns. I'll get a lot of questions about these LEDs. Uh, they're very good, the maximum power is 90 watts each, so I've dialed them down to 50% uh, with 50% colour and 50% intensity, and that's using a spectral controller, which I'll show you later on. You don't have to use a spectral controller, you can do it manually via these knobs on the top here, um, but I use the spectral controller so it sets the photo period and uh, you can just program it to, to as you wish. So moving down to the actual aquarium, so uh, this is actually a prototype, it's not a production model, it was the first ever aquascape at aquarium that was, that was hand built in England. Um, it's, it's, even though it's a prototype it's still very very good quality, but the production models are even, even better quality. So uh, take a look at uh, some other videos talking about the aquascaper aquariums, but just in summary, uh, this is a 12mm glass, it's ultra low iron or super white we call it. It has a minimum aris, which is this tiny little bevel. It's not actually a bevel, it's called an aris, but it's like a, like a bevel. Um, it's got clear silic silicone, so it's very, very uh, minimal. And no, obviously no bracing or rims. It's uh, what we call a rimless tank, which allows uh, viewing opportunities from above, uh, which is really, really cool for aquascaping and really, really good for maintenance as well. But it's a, I think it's the dimensions that make it really cool. So this is 120 centimetres left to right, or 48 inches, 60 centimetres front to back, or 24 inches, and 45 centimetres tall, or 18 inches. So the total volume is about 320 litres or so, which is about 80 or 90 US gallons. So that's the aquarium itself. It comes on a, <clears throat> this is a gloss white cabinet, again hand built in the UK. Uh, the cabinets themselves very very high quality, they're available in 16 different finishes so suitable for pretty much any interior styling that you might have at home or office. And they come pre-drilled but they have holes in the side so you can have your tubing and your filter outlet and inlet coming over the side and that means you don't have to uh, distract the background. So in aquascaping a lot of the time we don't necessarily have a background at all, especially if you have pale walls we use the light spill from the suspended lighting to illuminate that wall and it gives the aquascape an extra sense of depth and dimension, I really like it. If I had um, a wallpaper or something distracting in, in the, on the wall, which I have in my other living room, then I would probably go for a black background, so I'll use black vinyl or black paint or something like that. I'll show you inside the cabinet and then I'll show you exactly all the, like the engine behind the aquarium and how it all works, etc. Okay, so we're in the cabinet now. Uh, filtration is two JBL 1501E green lines, brilliant filters, uh, very efficient in terms of power consumption, but a really good flow rate. I think they're rated at 1300 or 1400 litres per hour, and they don't tend to, uh, the flow tends to stay quite consistent even when they're dirty. Um, easy to clean, although uh, you do have to dismantle them like a regular filter. It's not like the new generation of filters with a, with a quick release pre-filter. Um, in line with the filter we have an Hydor ETH300, it's an external inline heater. Now the instructions say it should be mounted vertically, uh, but as you can see I don't really have the room 
and I've had no issues mounting it almost horizontally. Clear hosing, it needs a bit of a clean, it's a little bit dirty and that runs obviously to the filter outlet and filter inlet which are made of glass. That presents minimum distraction on the aquascape. And then the CO2 kit itself, we're, I'm using a 6 kilo fire extinguisher here and I have a very high end uh, CO2 regulator from America by uh, Greenleaf Aquarium. Very thankful for them for, to sending me over. I still need to do a, a review of it. It's a, it is a beautiful product though and I'm very impressed. Um, it does have a, a built-in um, bubble counter there but I find the bubbles are so small that they count too quickly so I fitted another bubble counter here and I'm running between two and three bubbles a second using this bubble counter and then CO2 proof hosing which is grey and that runs to an inline diffuser which I'll show you in a moment and that the, the CO2 marker bubbles get directly injected into the outflow of the water and that CO2 mist feeds the plants really well. Uh, you can see um, I've got, I'm trying to keep the cables as tidy as I can. I've got a six way extension here. Um, uh, I'm using five of the sockets. This is the power for the Kessel Spectral Controller, which you can see here. Here you can control your intensity and your colour. Here we have the two uh, sockets for the filters. This is for the heater and this is for the CO2 solenoid, which I have come on. Um, two hours before the lights which allows the CO2 to dissolve in the water which allows the plants to photosynthesize as soon as the lights come on. And over this side we've got the other filter which is exactly the same layout as this but we don't have the CO2 or the heater it's just going straight to the, the glass inlet and outlet there. I'm just using the supplied filter media, there's no carbon, uh, no other chemical media just sponges and biomedia. Very low bio load for the tank. As I said, it's over 300 litres. I've only got seven medium sized fish in there and, and lots of shrimp, so I'm not worried about um, you know, excess bio load at all. The filters are actually more for circulation rather than biological filtration because the plants do a lot of the biological filtration. That's inside the cabinet. The cabinet itself, hand built in the UK, like I said, has soft closed hinges. It's uh, double sealed, so you won't hopefully get any water ingress. If you get water in a cabinet it tends to warp and swell but hopefully you won't get any of that here. has push to close doors which are really nice and this is the gloss white finish which suits my living space very nicely. So here we have the inline diffuser like I said it's on the outside of the, on the, of the cabinet but you can't see it really because of the position of the uh, aquarium in the room and it's basically a ceramic tube um, which has got really really fine pores the high pressure gas builds up in this reservoir here penetrates the tube and flows directly into the hose and directly into the tank and i find this is the best method to get my co2 bubbles into the aquarium so you can see most of the plants now we've got some christmas moss just wedged in between the rocks there i've not tied it on or anything. I've literally just got clumps and wedged them in and hopefully eventually that will um, creep over the rocks and the wood. Got a tiny amount of Microsorum trident there, some um, trident leaf jar for fern, uh, a little bit of Anubius petite. Um, they're literally there just almost for fun to see see how they grow. Might even be able to grow them on quite big depending on how long I, how long I keep the skate going. In the background um, I've got Vallis nana, Vallis naria nana which is the long reedy type plant. And then I've got some Blixia, I think it's Blixia japonica. I'm not sure, I've been told it might be something else, so I have to get a proper ID on that. Um, but yeah, it's just a really simple layout, I really like it. The wood's manzanita wood, uh, which is a beautiful wood to work with. Um, I think this came over from Tom Barr. And I've got two types of stone. I've got some Manton stone here, which is ADA, very expensive. Uh, luckily I didn't have to pay for it, I got sent some by a friend. And then I've got some locally collected rocks um, just around the bigger rocks here you can see. Plants have only been growing for a, about a week. Um, I guess in a, in a month or two the Blixia well, should be up here hopefully and they'll form a nice kind of dome which I can shape really easily. The Vallis I might not keep, we'll see how we go, but the Vallis, the vertical nature of the Vallis I think matches the, the tall aspect ratio of the fish. So typically um, when I'm selecting a fish, I, I go for fish that suit the dimensions of the aquarium. Now this is obviously a lot longer than it is tall, but um, so typically I would I would choose a slender fish, a 
fast moving slender fish that swims up and down the tank. But because I've gone for an island composition, I'm using lots of vertical elements with the wood and the plants. I think the fish really suit this more vertical nature um, aesthetic. You can see I've deliberately got the, the lily pipes, the, the filter outlets, quite high up in the water column and that generates lots and lots of surface movement. I don't want too much circulation actually in the tank because the angelfish are quite wide bodied, um, not particularly fast slender swimmers, they're not designed for fast swimming like the buzzboras, danios, that sort of thing. So an advantage of lots of surface movement is lots of oxygen which is great for the fish, great for the shrimp, also great for the filter bacteria and even good for the plants as well. So I have to use a little bit more CO2 than I normally would because the CO2 gas gets driven off by the, by the surface movement but it's definitely a trade-off uh, worth doing. Another great thing is you can probably see the beautiful glitter lines created by the, by the LEDs here, the Kessel LEDs. These are a point source light uh, which means the light is really concentrated into a, from a small spot. What well, that does, it creates beautiful shadows. I think it looks really natural. Some people, it's not to all people's taste, um, but me and my other half, we absolutely love it. And we'll sit just behind where the camera is right now. We'll sit here for hours. We'll have a glass of wine, a cup of tea, depending on what time of day it is. Uh, won't have any TV on, not even any music. We'll just have a nice chat and we'll just stare into the tank and really enjoy it. So one of the jobs I do every day is feed the plants. I use the Aquascaper Complete Liquid Plant Food, developed by myself and Evolution Aqua. It's a, it's a product designed to be dosed daily, which keeps things really simple. If you miss a couple of days out now and again, it doesn't really matter. Um, but the instructions are comprehensive, they're on the back. It tells you how much to dose per uh, litre of water, aquarium water, and also tells you how much to dose according to the energy levels in the aquarium. So the more light and the more CO2 you have, for instance, the more fertiliser you will need to dose. So this is a kind of a medium energy tank. There's not a massive amount of plants in here. The lights aren't on maximum, but we do have CO2 injection. So the medium amount here is uh, two mil per day per 50 litres. Let's say after displacement, we have about 300 litres or so. So that's six times two mil, which is 12 mil. Uh, the cap is 10 mil, so we just simply do a cap full and a little bit extra, no need to be totally accurate and that's the daily dosing done. That just feeds the plants with all of the nutrients they need including nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium which a lot of fertilisers don't include in the one bottle. It also con con contains all of the essential micronutrients and other macronutrients as well. So that's it for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Just a quick introduction to my Aquascape 1200 Aquascape and a little bit of technical information about the equipment that's running it. Uh, tune in for more videos. I'm going to do a maintenance session on this soon so you can look forward to a step-by-step -step video on that. If you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button and keep on scaping. Cheers. Bye-bye.